Emily Longnecker explains why teachers say this does not cut it. Emily? Nearly half of the state's two-year budget will be spent on education. Now, earlier this session, the governor detailed how he would like to spend that money, and then the House released its budget. Today, the Senate talked about how they would like to spend the state's money on education, and the state's largest teachers' union responded. Today, we have gathered to demand full funding for our public schools. Hundreds of Hoosier teachers from across the state brought their signs and their voices to the State House Thursday. Among their concerns, a proposal in the Senate's budget that would start giving property tax money to charter schools while eventually eliminating charter school grants. The House's budget called for increasing charter school grants from the current $1,250 to $1,400 per student. If you don't kind of take care of the public funding first, it's kind of hard to... to give that money to charter schools when they're, when they're still lacking funds for public schools. The Senate's proposed budget does not expand the school choice program, which gives families vouchers to attend private schools. The House version does, more than doubling the amount the state would spend each year. Critics, including Democratic lawmakers, argue vouchers take needed funds away from the state's public schools. Ninety percent of Indiana's kids go to public school. That's where the majority of our kids go. That's who we should be supporting. Under the Senate's budget, the state would pick up the cost of textbooks at $160 million a year. The governor's proposed budget has a similar measure. Lawmakers in the House did not include a separate allocation for curriculum materials, instead proposing schools pick up the tab. And we're putting another burden on schools to have to find the funding to pay for textbooks. That's the issue. This is why we have to fight. At the State House, Emily Longnecker, 13 News.